Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I'm here today with a quick little crafternoon project for my hermit crab tank. Although you could use the basics of these crafts for other pets in other places of your house. This one is pretty simple. This is literally one of those little guys here. It's Bluetooth, so it sends it to my phone, both the temperature and humidity in our house. Um, and look, it just has a, a small smiley face there telling me this one's, I don't know if that's a smiley face, because that is below the humidity I've set. I've never even noticed that smiley face there before. It does show me the battery though, and I can pull it up on my phone, which I'd show you if I wasn't filming on my phone. Um, I can keep a record of what the current temp and humidity is, what they are over the last hour, day, week. This has been a really great, little thing. It comes from Govi. It's not sponsored. I got a two pack. So there's one up in my son's room because he's really sensitive to temperature. And then this one goes in the hermit crab tank where I'm always searching for the perfect temp and humidity for them, both because they have modified lungs and need a decent humidity, but they're also more active and happier at a certain temperature. <laughs> Neither of which is this, um, but this is out in the house. It's not in their tank. Now, one thing is, where do you put this? So there's a little stand I can put here in the back or I can just set it somewhere, but it's really like if I set it on top of a log, it's telling me the humidity of the log. And of course the log is wood, it holds humidity. So it's not really telling me the air temperature, and which is what I need. And I need it just off the, the sand. I don't want it on the sand substrate. Um, I wanna know what it's like where, right where the hermit crab's walking around, right? And so, I saw a video where Crab Central Station was reviewing some viewers' tanks and they had done this little setup. Um, so this is just craft mesh. You can see it's right here. This is, I kept the stickers on so it's size 10. Size 10 mesh, mesh, and I got this at, um, I got this at Michael's. It was the only size plastic canvas they have. They now call it craft mesh. Hermit crab keepers use this a lot. Sometimes they just cut it to the right size and they'll use, um, just a second here, they'll use these little zip ties to hook it onto things. So you can use it to make ladders for your hermit crab, um, just different walking and play structures because they can get their little feet into these little holes and they can use it to climb on and it's super great for them. Um, and of course that plastic, they're not really eating it or anything. It's not dangerous for them. So what I did was I got my, my twine here. I think this is a hemp cord. This is the one again I use for my towel cross that I'm wearing around my neck, which I can kind of show you. Sorry, I have a mic on. So I use it to make the knotted cord I wear around my neck with my towel cross because I'm a secular Franciscan. Um, so I always have some of this laying around. I just threaded this onto a darning needle. And I know back in the day when I legit did plastic canvas, you were supposed to go diagonally from one little square to the next. And you'd go in this little row and work your way over. And then you'd work your way back and work your way over. Um, I don't think the hermit crabs are that picky. And I actually wanted to give them a variety of textures to do it. So I just kind of laid this down on a piece of paper and traced it. Of course that piece of paper has disappeared my luck um i can put the the size i did in the notes below but basically i laid it down and i traced around it i wanted to leave one empty row of squares on each side because i'm going to use that to make my joins um between them and i just whip stitched those you can use various stitches to join them i just did a rough whip stitch so you just want to have one extra row around each side that you're going to do for that joining and again i just randomly kind of did it i wanted to give i wanted it to look a little bit more natural than the plain mesh but i'm not going to spend forever on it and you know i've been having issues with my hands so i just thought it'd be fun for the crabs to have some of this um, hemp cord on there so it would give them some great textures and help them climb and then i just made sure at all times it would drop through Again, I just kind of popped it in there and traced with a marker. If you use something like a Sharpie, it'll write on the plastic and then you can just cut it out. If you don't want the rough edges, you can cut them nicer. You can use a craft knife, whatever. And this is just an aquarium zip tie. Let me get the name off of these over here. Yeah, 20 pack aquarium suction cup. I got it off of, um, you know, a major online realtor and it just, it actually just fits straight through these little holes. 
Um, you may not be so lucky. I was lucky that it did go through. If it didn't go through, I could just cut the bar between two and make it bigger, you know, make a hole in the craft mesh as big as I need. And then I'm going to make, I um, already made one loop from a suction cup because I know it's gonna take more than one of these as a loop, sorry. So I already put it through. The great thing about this set is that these zip ties go through here. Um, so it's already attached to my suction cup. And I have, I thought that one was steady. <laughs> Um, so I have that one set and then I'm going to just loop this one through and hook this one as well. So you just put the end in there and you can zip tie it tight as big or as loose as you want it later and then hang that and it's going to hang off the sand. Now this particular kind of suction cup actually came with two things. So I'm going to show you now. You can use it with the zip ties. You could use it with a piece of string that you found. These ones also have these great little hooks here in the end, and these actually pop right in there. So my thermostat, I have one that's hooked to my UTH, the under tank heater that runs across the back of my tank. I have a bean farm heater, and it has a little probe that I've attached it to. I've plugged it into a probe, and the probe, so I hang this on the top of my tank, and then my probe goes through it. And again, I can have that hanging right just off the substrate. And that just makes my under the tank heater shut off automatically when the correct temperatures reach. So I don't have to worry about it getting too hot in there, creating a hot spot, being danger to the hermit crabs. Don't have to worry about that. It helps me sleep at night. Now these are two varieties of air plants. I actually picked these up at my local farmer's market, but you can buy them from Josh's Frogs as well. Um, these are plants that can, they're, they're the kind of plants that don't need watering. About once a month, I think you go and soak them or every two weeks you can go soak them in some water and they should get all the nutrients they need from that. But otherwise they get it from the humidity in the air. Remember our hermit crabs are going to be around 75 to 80% humidity. So these plants are air plants. They're getting their humidity from the air and um, the hermit crabs may destroy them over time, but they like to climb on them. It gives them more greenery. It gives them more places to hide. So I got these and I was trying to put them around the tank. Um, and then I had this cute idea. So somebody had given me this coconut shell hidey hole, but when I put it down on the substrate, again, it absorbs the moisture, right? Because it's a kind of wood, it absorbs the moisture, it turns dark brown, and I'm afraid it's gonna start molding. So I was looking for other ways to use it. And I saw again in some of those videos, some cute ideas people had about how they made it into a swing. Um, other people you've seen on these air plant videos where they use the coconut half just to hold their air plant. Um, and both of these fit in there. One tip I have seen about air plants is to rinse them when you first bring them home because you don't wanna put any bugs or anything that you aren't aware of into your hermit crab tank, of course. Um, I didn't have a wooded ring, so I watched a bunch of videos this was considered the square knot at the top. And then you just wrap a piece around and make a knot. So that's how I made my loop, but you can do your loop however you want. Again, I'm gonna to have to hook this onto a suction cup. So I've already done that. Then I used, I think it was called the, the twisted knot. And I'm gonna try and show you that in a second. And then you wanna make about halfway where you want your thing. To, so you get done with your twisted knot. You're gonna to wanna to just make a big old knot <laughs> you know, where you take everything you have and just literally make, make a knot and pull it through. So you're going to want to do that at the end of these twisted ones. And then I split it. So these were in four. These were all four strands. Um, and so I took and divided those four. And I took two from here and two from the guy next to him and made a knot. And I did that the whole way around. Um, and then I did one big giant knot at the bottom to put them all together. And that's supposed to make a cradle. You can do this thing where you take two and you're splitting them and combining them with ones next to them to make your cradle do it as much as or as little as you want. You can kind of see it's not perfect. Again, I have issues with my hands. I've never done macrame, well, since camp when I was a kid. Um, but I think it holds it pretty nicely. So I could leave it like this and it could be a little swing, you know, little hermit crab could come in, hop in it and swing. And I've literally seen them do it in the videos and it's hysterical. Um, my crabs are a little more shy right now. 
Um, so I'm being a little more non-committal, but I can pop my little air plant in there. And I thought that that was really cute. And if the hermit crabs get a little feisty, they can always throw that out and do it themselves. Now let's see if we can actually do one of those ourselves. So we would want just going to get a couple of lengths of string and see if we can do that knot again. I don't know if we can. Let's see. We're just going to grab four lengths and try and do that twisted knot. Um, of course, you're going to want to do them the same. When I did mine, I know I cut those long strings. I started out with like 12 strings that were 140 centimeters. Now what I did was I picked one that I kind of liked that somebody had in their house and saw how long it was and I figured I wanted half of that so I went with half the length. <laughs> now we're not going to do all the fancy knots at the top and I'm just going to start it because I just want to see that, show you that little pattern how I got that. So I'm just folded it all in half. And I'm going to take it and take this guy here, the end where I folded it and I'm just going to make it into a knot. I don't need anything fancy. I just need a loop at the top. And um, then it kind of hangs to that loop. So you can see that. So now I've got, ooh, I've got a lot here, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I've got two sets of four instead of three sets of four. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it. I'm going to take, take one set of four. So you've got a left and a right string, and then you've got two in the middle. So the one on the right is going to come over. You're just going to cross over the two middle guys. Now your lefty is going to go over him, but he's going to go through that first loop you made. Pull it, and you're going to pull it up and tight. And then again, I'm going to bring the right guy. He's going to loop over those two. And then, whoa, he really wants to loop. The left one's going to come over him over here. But then he wants to come through this one, the first loop we made. And we're going to pull it tight. And you're going to see in a minute, this is legit going to start curling. It doesn't curl right away, but don't get discouraged. So there's, we're going over the top, making a loop. Left guy goes over the right one, but behind all of those. And then you just pull it tight. And it's, I think they call this, you can see it's curling there a little bit. I think they call this the start of the half knot. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's the one thing I could do. I tried like a number of knots. They all looked crazy sloppy. Again, my hands were having a very hard time this morning. But this knot I could do, and I was really excited that I found one I can do. And um, I think it looks super cute. I think I am probably going to use this to make just some ladders and fun climbing things in there for the hermit crabs. I think they're gonna have a blast on it. Honestly, I think I could use this to make rabbit toys. Now, where did I find this twine? I found this in the checkout line at Michael's. This was not anything fancy. Um, if I do it in the future for the rabbits, who I know are going to eat it, I'm going to be more careful in how I select my cordage. Um, I'm gonna want something that I know is safe for them, free from any chemicals or preservatives or anything crazy. I highly doubt this has anything, but again, I'm going to be more careful with the rabbits because I'm guaranteed they're going to eat it. Um, but I think this could be something really fun for them. And again, I could make that probably out of even unbleached cotton for them. Or if you're a bit of a survivalist or you've got kids, you can make cordage out of regular plant fibers that you find and grow in your own yard. So you know they're organic um, and you break them down, you roll them into fibers and then you can totally use them to make these rabbit toys, and then you're gonna know they're safe, especially if you've raised it yourself. And there you can see that knot starting to twist. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, you could, of course, just braid them. You could just braid it like you normally would. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy macrame knots. You could just braid it like you would braid your hair, whatever style you like, and normally I do that in a three. So you could do that, right? This one has two, so one guy's gonna be a little bit bigger. But there is no problem with doing that. Um, that's going to give you a variety of textures. Again, that's going to just be enrichment for your animals. It's going to be fun. Um, honestly, if you were making a baby mobile and it was something that was out of their reach, you could use these kind of knots too. It would just be a variety of textures and things for them to look at. And then you could hang baby rattles or something for them. Again, just a super sweet, easy, 
simple idea. And then you can incorporate these back together whenever you want. You can tie a knot, you can braid them back together, whatever you want to do. It's kind of a fun thing. There's no wrong way. And I think, I think almost all of them look super cute even when you're making mistakes. I, what is it about this kind of cordage? It's just relaxing fun to do, and it looks really natural and cute, especially in your habitat. I hope you enjoyed this little crafternoon craft. I really enjoyed doing it this morning. And I, again, my hands were really stiff. You can see I have issues with my hands. Um, it was really helping, helping me loosen up my hands. Again, working with this big fat one more than this little skinny guy. But as my fingers got loose from this, I was able to do work on this craft um, a little bit more over lunch and finally get it done. This is I've been doing it here and there over the course of a week. And this little guy I knocked out this morning, but again, it's that bigger cord that was just easier on my hands. I think it's pretty, um, I think it's nice. And if you were living outside or you know in a homestead situation or an encampment, this is an easy craft to do that's gonna give you more like self shelf space, right? <laughs> that you could hang things up in the trees or whatnot. Um, even if you're creating a lovely prayer space outside for you, on the patio, you can hang little mason jars in here. I would not light a candle and put it in jute because this is flammable. But if you had a little battery operated candle or something that had a little scent to it that you wanted out, like it was a candle you weren't gonna burn, but it had scent, that could be something that's pretty to put out. Again, these air plants would be gorgeous out on a little patio or sunroom. So I hope you have some fun with it. Um, and then just get out there and enjoy nature because we know it's always going to point us back towards God. And ah, that's the whole point, isn't it? God bless you, friends. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.